The Crystal Mission kicked off in the year of 1987 when I joined the Greenpeace expedition as ship's doctor and Antarctic base doctor. On Ross Island, we built the Greenpeace Antarctic base under the looming mass of Mount Erebus about a hundred yards away from Scott's hut at Cape Evans, built in 1911. Through the year, I got to explore many new places and spaces. We learned how to refuel in total darkness in a hundred knot blizzard. While inside, our hydroponic system produced plenty of good fresh fruit and vegetables. Our team of four included Justin Farrelly, our radio operator, Gudrun Gaudian, our scientist, and Kevin Coniglin, our base leader. Together, we managed, only just mind you, to survive the year. After the first blizzard, we learned that we'd put the front door in the wrong place and we had to cut a new door on the windward side and dig our way out. Through all of this, I managed to collect plenty of good video footage. After five months of Antarctic night, the sun rose again over the Barn Glacier and I got to explore some new expanded spaces. The main event of the year for me was the Harmonic Convergence of August 16th and 17th, 1987, in which people gathered all over the world at sacred sites to put their minds together for peace. And this is really what kicked off the Crystal Mission. Over the next few years, I did many expeditions on the MV Gondwana as ship's doctor to the Antarctic, and by 1992, we'd achieved a great victory with the establishment of an Antarctic World Park, at least for the next 50 years. This is us snapping at the flanks of the Antarctic Japanese whaling fleet, and here is the MV Gondwana and sailing vessel Rainbow Warrior celebrating the new year of 1990 in Auckland. Meanwhile, the powers that be tested their nuclear weapons in the Pacific Ocean, which prompted a group of women in London to manifest the Rainbow Warrior, which the French Secret Service then sank in Auckland Harbour in 1985. But they did not realise that you cannot sink a rainbow, and therefore by 1990, the new Rainbow Warrior was planning an expedition to Mururoa Atoll, the French nuclear testing ground. But I was fortunate enough to be able to join the Rainbow Warrior as ship's doctor in a drift net expedition to the North Pacific, where we discovered the Japanese and Korean drift net fleets. More than a thousand vessels strip mining the ocean, killing thousands upon thousands of dolphins in their drift nets. And we tried our hardest to show the world what was going on, the destruction of our planet. This then led to the Crystal Mission, when I got off the Rainbow Warrior in San Francisco and drove to Sedona, Arizona, where I met a Native American grandmother named Sakina Blue Star. Sakina introduced us to Ray Brown and the famous pyramid crystal from an underwater pyramid in the Bermuda Triangle. Ray Brown said that the pyramid was a part of the ancient civilization of Atlantis, now buried beneath the waves, and, and we decided on an expedition to put the crystal back in the pyramid. However, instead we made contact with Robert Crystal, the holder of another ancient crystal sphere, and together we prepared a 1968 Chevy Suburban for a, for a trip to Mexico for the total solar eclipse of July 11, 1991. Our mission was from the Keys of Enoch and was directed at stabilizing and activating a triangle of sites in southern Mexico and Guatemala. There we met an ancient Lacandone elder, Chan Quin Vallejo, one of the living remnants of the ancient Mayan civilization who left their amazing glyphs and pyramids in the jungles of Mexico and Guatemala and incorporated into them their knowledge of the triangular mathematics of the world grid. Into this picture then came the travelling map of the old Māori tuhunga in New Zealand, which appeared to fit into the Dodeca Icosa grid of the planet. Marcel Vogel, the crystal master in San Jose, was another teacher in the crystal mission, and from him we learned how to use his crystals cut to the frequency of pure water both for personal and planetary healing. Harry Oldfield in London taught us about his electro-crystal therapy and showed us how he could bring the human auric field alive into 3D colour with his PIP technology.
Robert Anton Wilson was another teacher in the Crystal Mission. May you rest in weirdness, Bob. Bruce Cathy, the famous Air New Zealand pilot, is still going strong and producing many books about the harmonic code and the world grid. His mathematics then shed light on the ancient cross house that once stood in the centre of the North Island of New Zealand and was built with the harmonics of light in its structure, here demonstrated on ancient Celtic NZ.co.nz. Jack Darby was the creator of the Violet Ray Crystal Resonator in Tucson, Arizona, and created for it the Golden Triad Antenna. Synchronously, the next day we met Dr. Frank Alper in Phoenix, Arizona, who imprinted in our auric field the Golden Triad. Solara Antara Amara was an angel who came from America to shift the Alpha Planetary Vortex from the Giza Pyramids to New Zealand and open the doorway of the 1111, she said. The Golden Phoenix appeared on the scene, along with Victory White Fire Eagle, and it was time for the Golden Phoenix program under the Red Rocks of Arizona and the Rainbows of Sedona, Arizona, and it was time for a good cleanse. Jonathan Ray Spinney told us all about the meaning of the eclipse cycles, but not even he realised that there would be another one, same time, same day, July 11, but 19 years on, over Easter Island. Indeed, another 19 years would go by before I got back on the trail of the Crystal Mission. So here I stay, delivering hundreds of babies, working in general practice, still under the shade of Horus and Hathor, raising my little family, my twin boys, Jono and Julius, and my little Kapahaka princess, Zana. Nineteen good years would go by on the white sand beaches of the far north of New Zealand, raising money for the victims of the tsunami and generally relaxing into the joys of family life. Meanwhile, every now and then, we could take a break from the family life and go on another long trail. This was the Trail of the Hawk, an 8,000 mile journey around the Native American tribes in 1992, which started in Hopi Land on First Mesa in the Kiwi Patrol number no. 2. Our team was made up of yours truly, along with Wendy Brown, Barry Brailsford, and Māori elder Maru Sterling, along with our Choctaw guide, Alan Leon. Wendy Brown was the one who kick-started the whole adventure with her Wendy Brown Adventures. And Barry Brailsford is the world-famous author of Song of Waitaha, along with many other books here seen at the Fire Valley, Nevada, the second stop on the Trail of the Hawk, on which we took Greenstone to 12 different Native American tribes. The following year of 1993 was the year of the Trail of the Feathered Serpent, in which a group of eight Kiwis, along with our Choctaw guide again, took Greenstone to the mountain tribes of southern Mexico and Guatemala. In several places we arrived at the perfect time with the first spats of rain to break a long drought. On this trail we discovered the ancient Olmec who left their giant stone heads and passed on the, their knowledge of the mathematics of the world grid to the Maya, who left the same mathematics coded into the pyramids of the Yucatan and left for us in the 21st century the knowledge of the world dodeca icosa grid and how we can fly on it using the old Tuhunga's travelling map indeed. Another old Tuhunga gave us instructions on how to find a crystal skull down there in the Mexican Triangle and this mission is yet to be accomplished. What we did find in 1991 however was our Mexican tetrahedron triangle re re replicated in the crop circles of England with this one becoming known as the mother of all pictograms. This then led to the mystery of the star glyphs and a series of journeys in 99, 2000 and 2001 to Avebury and Stonehenge and the crop circles of southern England. 2001 turned out to be the peak year for the crop circle phenomenon with the largest crop circle ever. A, a, a circle of 409 different circles across a square kilometre of crop. This one became known as the mega galaxy wheel. But now, as the sunspot cycle ramps up, we are seeing another wave of patterns that appear to be amping up towards the 2012 climax date. Also in 2001, we saw this amazing pixelated face, the Chilbolton face, alongside a message, and then the following year, another message about the race of beings who sent it. For me personally, the most fantastic pattern of all was the Ira Tangata spiral, which was manifested for our small group 
right where we asked for it, and which I later realised was replicated in a pattern on the cover of a small book I'd bought in the bookshop at Avebury. This then leads us to the present day, 2011, and a new book, The Mystery of the Atlantean Orb, and how it relates to the Ark of the Covenant and the mysteries that still lie hidden in the tomb of Tutankhaten. So, if you want to, come and join us on the trail of the Mystery Hunter.